Hi, my name is Sarah Rindon. I'm a current senior at Mississippi State University. And this past semester, I had the wonderful opportunity to intern at the Children's Foundation of Mississippi. I wanted to talk a little bit about how that experience has changed me and how the missions and values and goals that kind of orient the Children's Foundation have influenced me. I initially heard about the Children's Foundation through my master's program at Harvard, and I instantly resonated with the organization's mission. Additionally, like on a personal level, I wanted to leverage my coursework in health policy to contribute to and learn more about the policymaking process within a public health space that I was passionate about. And my work with the Children's Foundation thus far has really checked all those boxes. So um, I was initially drawn to it because of the mission and I couldn't be happier with the work I've been able to do and people have been able to meet. Actually, I was introduced to the Children's Foundation of Mississippi by a, my, my practicum professor. So she had talked to me about all the amazing work that CFM uh, was doing in Mississippi. I was incredibly impressed with the fact that all the different topics and the, the ability of having multi-sectors, like being able to speak to physicians, but then also talk to the legislators and then have some work with the Office of Medicaid. At the time, I hadn't had necessarily an idea about what work I would be doing with um, with the Children's Foundation of Mississippi, but I was just really impressed in terms of the scope of the work. Um, the mission and the vision, of course, pulled me in. Uh, and, and this idea of, you know, working as a village and working collaboratively, uh, not, you know, not just an organization that works in silo, um, that really appealed to me. So I was a Harvard Mississippi Delta Fellow, and I got into this position because Harvard had a summer practicum internship fair. And I remember I sent in my resume. I had classes, so I couldn't attend. But shortly after, I got an email from one of the people working at CFM and telling me about this uh, amazing opportunity and how they wanted to speak with me because they got my resume. And that's how it all came up to be because then I reached out and I spoke to Linda and talking to Linda seems like an amazing uh, organization that's doing a lot of great work in the world of public health. We do research and we publish the research, but the adoption and the implementation and dissemination of that research, that's the where the most work is needed. And I think that's what Children's Foundation of Mississippi is doing its best at. I worked on a project to develop the first ever blueprint for children's health and well-being in Mississippi for the Children's Foundation of Mississippi. So in developing the bl blueprint, the most important thing for the foundation and our team was to get different voices, to get in input from different stakeholders across the state. and. I think that was a really important facet of the work because we were not just getting the voice of the Children's Foundation, but hearing what people in Mississippi thought was important to focus on in terms of improving um, the health and well-being of children in the state. So we got to hear from people working in different sectors, government, some other nonprofit organizations, and we got to hear from just lay people. So hearing voices from that many different facets and that diverse of a population was really important. And I think it was a great way to start the work on developing the blueprint for the foundation. Most of my work was directly working with the Office of Medicaid. And we were working on what I would say is incredibly innovative very complicated for sure topic, which is value-based payments, specifically as it relates to behavioral health services for children in foster care. So it was incredibly narrow, you know, in terms of the focus. And at the same time, the sections that made it so innovative is that across the United States, we just don't see value-based payments, period. It's not something that's being embraced 
by many providers or healthcare organizations thinking about how it is uh, not just saving costs, but really building value into services and, and offerings for children in foster care. We actually were tasked to develop a policy memo and a blueprint as part of the second edition. And each of us had a different kind of stakeholder that we were working with. So each of us kind of worked individually in researching what we thought were the gaps in um, kind of public health policies and what are the opportunities to kind of address, especially in foster youth. And we took it from different angles. So Children are going through all the traumatic experiences in life. Um, and because of that, they learn differently, they see things differently in schools. And I guess having teachers or people in the school that know how to work with children that have been through certain things will be able to help them learn and be better in school and things like that. We learned that there's a lot of factors that go into like an overall well-being of a child and uh, what part we can play as adults and as like supportive people and as just people in everyday life to support them. Because like, school and like, their everyday life also just affects them as they become adults and how they move in society. Um, and just trying to figure out what we can do to make, you know, things better for them so they can uh, be able to learn and be productive in school and um, everything outside of school. There's more and more research that shows that if kids are learning healthy habits when they are in school, they will be implementing healthier habits as they grow up and will have a lower incidence of non-communicable diseases. So just the fact that we have to have appropriate funding and more funding into the school system, the healthcare system in Mississippi and focus on the aspect of prevention. In order to make prevention more and more attractive to people, it is very important to change how we speak in the public health world. Let's not talk about what will happen in 10 years. Let's talk about what will happen next year. So if you adopt this healthy lifestyle right now, what will happen to you this month? Data is very important, but how do we disseminate the data to the community, lay person in the community, the kids, the parents? Let's get parents involved in nutrition education in schools, for instance, not just kids. So just bringing all stakeholders together, I think that's what we need right now. Elsewhere, there's always kind of disintegrated services. So all of them are kind of sharing a common goal, but the sharing of resources and sharing of funding does not happen in a more efficient manner. And that kind of wastes resources and kind of degrades the communication that can take place. And as a result, the the youth population are the ones that are most affected. A I think for Mississippi's children specifically, I hope that they get to be involved in the work that is meant to impact them so that their voices are also included when we are trying to come up with programs that benefit children because it's important to hear the voices of the people or of the groups that you're trying to impact. And it is important to work with them to develop programs that they think are the best to focus on for them. Children truly are the future. They're the future of Mississippi. They're the future of the world. And they aren't always in the best situation to be able to advocate for themselves. So it's our duty as their encouragers, their parents, their mentors to help them along and to really give them their best foot forward. You know, apart from the actual content of the work and the solutions I've been able to develop that are hopefully going to be actionable, the most rewarding facet of working on causes like that of my project and the work that the Children's Foundation does has been the people I've been privileged enough to work alongside. So just to name a few, doctors Linda Southward and Connie Baird Thomas have been incredible mentors without whose steady guidance this project really wouldn't have gone anywhere. I also want to highlight judges John Hudson, Tom Broom, and Carolyn Hicks, as well as John Damon of Canopy and Dr. Teresa Hannah all of whom were, they so generously donated their time to answer all of my questions, no matter how fundamental they may be. And this really provided me like much needed context with regard to the issues plaguing Mississippi's foster care system and the mental health uh, landscape specifically within the state. Going to the Civil Rights Museum was transformative for me. I felt like 
I learned so much about history um, and it was phenomenal to have history come alive by the places that we visited, by the Children's Foundation staff taking us around and, and telling us about Mississippi and its history. So I feel like that was incredibly memorable for me to have the opportunity to have visited the Delta and to meet different individuals in Mississippi. I think it definitely helped to dispel a lot of myths about families and people who live in Mississippi. And I feel like I'm bringing in Mississippi with me everywhere I go. <laughs> in my conversations with legislators here in Massachusetts, in my conversations with community partners, executive directors and leaders in Massachusetts specifically, for me, I feel like all children need a holistic approach in the way that the Children's Foundation is, is focusing on health and working collaboratively with different sectors because I think that's that's the future of children's health is to really go outside of our silos outside of our disciplines skills and expertise and I think every time we met as a group to discuss our project it wasn't just talking about the work it was also checking into how I was doing as a person and I think the Children's Foundation Linda and um, everyone that we got to interview people working on the board, they were really interested in how I was doing as a person. So that was really, really great to know that I was not just working for the Children's Foundation, but then the foundation was really um, interested in my well-being as well. I loved it. I love the Southern hospitality. They made me feel like I was one of their own. And it was just great chatting up and talking about ourselves, our lives. And that is the one thing that I really liked during the internship. I'm really grateful for the opportunity. It gave me a look into something else, the Southern hospitality, Southern states and everything else, which I don't think I would have had that chance to look at. So it opened my eyes.